more trouble for Maxine and the Dems. That story top in our two-minute drill tonight. We welcome our panel, Lindsay Piegza of FTN Financial. You've seen author and columnist Essie Cup. Give me not. And Fox News contributor Angela McGlowan. And with all this beauty, we also have Tim Carney of the Washington Examiner. Yeah, I tell you, Tim, it's unfortunate you're not here with me tonight. But you're not. You're inside the Beltway. So we'll start with you. The House Ethics Committee reportedly postponing the ethics violation trial of Congresswoman Maxine Waters after finding more evidence that she helped the terribly managed One United Bank at TARP funds. Remember, it's a bank in which her husband was on the board. Her family owns shares quite a bit. According to new emails uncovered by the committee, her chief of staff directly coordinated with other members of the House Financial Services Committee on behalf of the bank. So could this get uglier than Charlie Rangel's trial? Tim, what do you think? Well, you left out that her chief of staff is also her grandson, I believe. Well, that's true, um, yeah. in, in the family. And so, yes, this, this really could get ugly because it, these new emails show, and they corroborate what we saw earlier, that she was steering bailout money to herself. And this is part of why we say that bailouts, while the Democrats try to say and some Republicans, oh, well, the bailouts paid back, these things are vehicles for corruption, and Waters is proving it. Yeah, and let's not forget, Angela, that yes. Barney Frank was also, because it's in his constituency, he was also lobbying heavily to get money for this bank. He was lobbying heavily, and this is a big hit for the Democrats. Let's not forget Maxine Waters. She's the queen of the liberals. She's the matriarch of the Black yeah. Caucus. Whenever there were problems, David, dealing with the NAACP, Walmart, when Al Sharpton was out there, Maxine Waters was right there. Remember, Colonel her. West wants to become part of the Black Caucus now. Yeah. So it'd be interesting to see whether they I accept think that him he or would, reject I, him. They're going to accept him. Okay. Accept him. One of the problems, too, is that as they drag this out further and further, more and more evidence becomes available, and more and more evidence is mounting against her. So I I think this will take a, a much uglier turn. Worse uh, uh, than Char what no, Charlie what, Rangel went what? through? No, the Democrats swat these away like they're flies. This has no yeah, but lasting... but there's resonance with the public, isn't It has there? resonance with us because we're smart people who follow politics, but... Speak for look, yourself when Charlie, you say you're smart people. David, but the Charlie fact is, is that the public's not asleep. No. They know what's going on. The, you're right, but the, this is not going to embarrass the Democrats. They don't get embarrassed. But Charlie Maxine Rangel Waters, embarrassed Congress and nothing happened. Maxine Waters has been a thorn in the conservative side. She has been the heroine of the Democrat movement, so this is going to hurt. Okay, no, all right. No. Tim Carney reporting today that a group of big businesses ranging from GE to startups like Coda Automotive and Gridpoint have formed the Electrification Coalition, which lobbies for expanded subsidies for plug-in cars. Subsidies keeping the electric car dream alive. Tim, is this good for business or is it just more special deals for insiders? This is the single worst clean energy proposal I've heard. And I'll tell you why. Because their idea is not to have more electric cars out there. It's to have 75% of all miles driven be driven in a plug-in electric car, which involves vastly building out this infrastructure of charging stations and, mm. and all sorts of things like that. So basically, they have this one-size-fits-all solution. It reminds me of when I was in college when they started wiring Ethernet ports into every study carol and dorm room. By the time they finished, every kid was showing up with his own laptop see, that had a wireless. Yeah. We've already on. seen these cool commercials yeah. where you see these things popping up all right. over the place, these plug-in things. The Volt, the Leaf, yeah. I mean, <laughs> what I hate about this and most subsidies is that it completely circumvents the markets, right? You have the government inflating this. They, they get, they're, they're allowed to be exempt from the test of the markets. So our choice in this process is completely removed. I think Essie has a really good point here. And what it does is redirect funds to maybe not mm -hmm. the most efficient sector. Yep. So what we're doing is taking away allocation of goods that we could put somewhere else and make a more efficient product. And it reminds us that sometimes businesses are against the free market operating. Businesses are, and this is just another exactly. big deal for special interests. What about clean coal technology? What about algae that takes algae and turn it into diesel fuel? Why not use the resources that we already Good have point. here? Well, America. one thing that we also have to think about, though, well, is that getting, it is on a regional basis, too. not a national basis. So ethanol in Missouri makes sense. But, but clean, ethanol... But we're the Saudi Arabia of coal. We are the Saudi Arabia of coal, and we have clean coal technology. And we can best gas, it. natural gas, that's another big mm -hmm. venture. All right, Toys R Us under attack from the Teamsters, the union which has had a long battle <laughs> with the co-owner of the company, claiming that the nation's biggest toy chain is selling toxic toys containing dangerous chemicals. The company completely denies the charge, but the controversy could screw up the company's plans for an IPO next year. So will the union spoil the holiday season for the future and for Toys R Us? What are you hearing about this, Tim? 
Well, it's, it's actually a standard practice of the unions to go and pick on companies that they're having little squabbles with, but for things completely unrelated to the union squabbles. In other words, they go after CVS for putting condoms behind the counter because that's spreading STD. Right. This was one of the things they did recently. And so now they're going after, after uh, Toys R Us, and the articles I read on that, they drilled down a little bit further, and they said, you know what? There's no evidence that these charges well, they're throwing at them are true. And, and the bottom line, Angela, is they're going after Toys R Us because Toys R Us is owned by a company that is the, the enemy of the Teamsters. It is the enemy of the Teamsters, and that's what the unions do. They go after the people to actually have them become unionized. But Toys R Us is solid. I love Toys R Us. I go there and shop for my nieces and nephews. I don't think it's going to hurt them. Well, uh, look, what's so ridiculous is this reminds me of last Christmas when they said those Zuzu hamsters were toxic okay. if your child ingested four to five of them. It, again, there, there's no proof that there, there's even PVC in these toys. What they did was take a small sample. How could you not they found love a this high guy? level of chlorine. Well, how could you not love this guy? It's not like they're going to eat it or yeah. anything. <laughs> I mean, you know? Yeah, but I mean, did, look, anyone with a pulse can see the transparency behind this. Why is a union attacking a toy company? It makes no sense. This is for, you know, the FDA or some safety and, you know, health and safety regulatory group to, to look into. The union is going after KKR, the co-owner of Toys R Us. This is a personal attack. Anyone can see through it. All right, coming up on deck, John Stossel hosting a very special Thanksgiving with an important lesson from the Puritans, of all people, how they converted from socialism to capitalism in just one season. It's fascinating stuff. I didn't know this. Very interesting. And don't forget to vote. The president will gain the trust of the business community. If you believe he will, it's a buy. If you think he never will, it's a sell. If you're not sure it's a hold, text 369-249.